Starting with this video, we will introduce some key variables used in chemical engineering processes. Variables, as the name implies, are quantities that change during chemical processes. In this course, we are interested to study how they change in relation with each other, so it is important to fully understand what they are. This video includes some common quantities that are related to mass and volume, such as density, specific volume, specific weight, specific gravity, mass flow rate, and volumetric flow rate. We are probably all very familiar with density, which is defined as the mass of a substance divided by the volume it occupies. The common symbol used for density is Greek letter rho, therefore the formula can be written as rho equals to m over v, m is mass and v is volume. And here is its dimension and SI unit, kilogram per cubic meter. Density is an intrinsic property, which means that it's a property that is inherent to the substance itself, and it depends only on the composition and the structure of the substance. Specific volume is defined as the volume that a substance occupies divided by its mass, and as you can see, it is the reverse of density. Therefore, specific volume is simply the reciprocal of density and it equals to V the volume over M the mass. And this reciprocal relationship is reflected by its dimension and SI unit as well. Specific weight, which should not be confused with the specific volume that we just introduced, is actually defined in a similar way as density, but it is the weight of the substance divided by the volume it occupies. Therefore, the formula is gamma, the Greek letter symbol for specific weight equals to W, the weight over V, the volume, but also it is related to density through G, the gravitational acceleration constant, and its SI unit is Newton per cubic meter. We mentioned that density is an intrinsic property. Gamma, however, is no longer intrinsic. It's an extrinsic property. This is because it depends on g, the gravitational acceleration constant, which depends on different factors such as location or even the weather. Specific gravity can be very easily confused with specific weight or even specific volume. But specific gravity is actually a relative density. This is because it is defined as the density of a substance divided by the density of a reference substance, Sg equals to rho over rho reference. So as you can see, it is actually a ratio. Therefore, it is dimensionless, or we say that its dimension is pure number one, and it is unitless as well. For specific gravity, the most commonly used reference substance is water at 4 degrees C, Therefore, unless we specify otherwise, when we mention specific gravity in this course, we always assume that water is the reference substance. And you probably know why water is the most commonly used one. This is because its density at 4 degrees C is exactly 1 gram per cubic centimeter. It's the same as saying 1 gram per milliliter or 1 kilogram per liter. Therefore, for example, if we know that the density of mercury at 20 degrees C is 13.546 gram per cubic centimeter, then its specific gravity, which equals to the ratio of the density of mercury and the density of water, which is 1, is easily calculated as 13.546. No dimension, no unit. But sometimes we include this note to indicate that this is the specific gravity at 20 degrees C with the reference of water at a 4 degrees C. Or if we know that the specific gravity of olive oil is 0 0.92, we can easily calculate its density to be 0 0.92 gram per cubic centimeter. But if you prefer to use American engineering unit system, we simply need to look up the density of water given in pound mass per cubic foot, and we can also easily calculate the density of olive oil, also given in pound mass per cubic foot. As you probably have learned in chemistry, for a certain amount of gas, 
pressure change or temperature change can affect its volume, therefore its density, significantly. But for most solids and liquids that can be considered incompressible, the effects of pressure and temperature are not significant. The effects of pressure on density for solids and liquids are essentially negligible, but the effects of temperature on density are sometimes not negligible. For example, you have probably heard the term thermal expansion, which means that for many but not all substances, an increase in temperature will increase its volume, therefore decrease its density. And that is how a mercury thermometer works to indicate the change in temperature. Empirical functions, which means that functions that are created mainly based on experimental observations, but not on theory, have been developed for some common liquids and solids to characterize the temperature-volume relation. The information can be found in your textbook or engineering handbooks or even online. And the following is an example. For example, here is an empirical function that relates the volume of mercury to the temperature and V0 is the volume of the same mass of mercury at 0 degrees C. We need to determine the density of mercury at 120 degrees C if its specific gravity at 20 degrees C is given. Based on the specific gravity information given, we can easily determine the density of mercury at 20 degrees C to be 13.546 gram per cubic centimeter. And since this empirical function relates volume and the temperature, therefore, let's first find the specific volume of mercury at 20 degrees C, which, if you recall, is simply the reciprocal of density. And this tells us the volume for one gram of mercury. Therefore, let's substitute this volume information into the empirical function. The temperature is 20 degrees C. Therefore, we get one unknown here that can be easily solved, and that is the specific volume of mercury at 0 degrees C, the volume for 1 gram of mercury at 0 degrees C. Therefore, at 120 degrees C, we can again use this empirical relationship, substitute in the specific volume for mercury at 0 degrees C, the temperature is 120, and we can solve for the specific volume for mercury at 120 degrees C. And from here, the density is simply the reciprocal of the specific volume to be 13.303 gram per cubic centimeter. And that is the answer we were looking for. And as you can see, compared to the density of mercury at 20 degrees C, this density is lower, which indicates that the volume of the mercury has expanded at a higher temperature, and that is the thermal expansion that mercury experiences. For a stream of a flowing fluid, either gas or liquid, that could be flowing inside a pipe, a process line, or in the open, we can determine its mass flow rate or volumetric flow rate. We draw an imaginary surface perpendicular to the stream and measure for a certain time period delta t what is the total mass delta m of the fluid flowing through this imaginary surface as well as the total volume delta v flowing through this imaginary surface. Then delta m over delta t is the average mass flow rate but when delta t, the time period, approaches zero, this becomes and differential quantity m dot, which is the instantaneous mass flow rate. Dot indicates that this is a differentiation with respect to time. Similarly, delta v over delta t is the average volumetric flow rate, but when delta t approaches zero, this becomes the instantaneous volumetric flow rate, which is again a differential quantity. And Sometimes this is represented by symbol Q. For mass flow rate, its dimension is mass over time, and its SI unit is kilogram per second. For volumetric flow rate, the dimension is volume over time, or cubic length over time, and its SI unit is cubic meter per second. And since mass and volume are related through density, therefore the mass and volumetric flow rate are also related through density.